Hi guys, it's me again. Um, I've been trying to do this video a couple of times, but the volume always seems to turn out quite terrible, so I'm just going to have to do it from here behind the camera. I am using my tablet again. Uh, great. The quality on this video is going to suck, and the sound is probably going to be even worse, but... Hey, don't worry about it. We'll stick at the point across. So, this is how a valveless pulse jet engine works. I hope you guys can see that. I'm using a Nerf gun for this. So, the first step right here, the fuel and air mix. This is carburation or carburization, whatever way it's spelled or whatever way you say it. But, whatever, yeah. So, this is going to be uh, the second part, ignition. So, once the fuel and air have mixed, you get your ignition. Well, that sucked, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it ignites. The third part is that you get your exhaust flying out the back, and I don't know if you guys can, uh, yeah, you guys can definitely see that. I'm looking at the screen right now. Uh, now, here, here's the interesting thing. Uh, some designs look like this. This is, for example, a rear-facing Chinese valveless pulse jet engine, which is the design I used last time to show you guys. I don't have a working model built, and I probably never will. <laughs> I'm not messing with stuff that's probably going to blow up. So, uh, he, there's a couple variations here. Right here, this intake would be for a forward-facing uh, inlet, which would typically be a valved design, meaning that there is a valve in here that can move inwards but cannot move outwards. All right? So... This is what you would have instead, if you didn't want to go with this design, you would have a tube like this and a tube over here for your intake. So, uh, on to step four, the air intake. How does it work? The exhaust, uh, once it moves out, it creates a partial vacuum. And the vacuum does not actually suck air in, like some would believe. But really, it creates a void where the outside air has more pressure than the inside air, because it's not a complete, perfect vacuum. Uh, which is basically non-existent anywhere you look except for in space. But uh, what happens is that this void allows air to move into the engine. With the valve here, that would mean the air would push the valve open and move into here until the pressure equalizes and the valve closes. Once that happens, the exhaust intake part uh, kicks in. Now. What I mean by that is that because of this partial void that drew the air in for the intake, you get particles from the exhaust that move into here. And what that will do is that will rekindle the ignition. That's what's going to take over. So once that's moving in, while that's moving in, I should rather say, your air is mixing again and the cycle continues. Yeah, so that's basically how a pulse jet engine works. You're going to get to the stoichiometric ratio, preferably, during carburation, and if you have liquid fuel, it's going to be sitting at the bottom, but if you have a gaseous fuel like methane, ethane, propane, or butane, and uh, uh, that's actually in the order it goes, methane, ethane, propane, uh, whatever, but if you have a gas uh, as your fuel, it's quite a simple system, because and it's even easier to control because you can moderate the amount of gas going in, meaning you moderate the amount of combustion occurring, <clears throat> and thus the power of each pulse, which then determines the rate of the pulses. So, I really do hope this helped you out a lot, and uh, yeah, have a nice day.